I design schools, but I'm not an architect and I don't write curriculum. I design schools that are more human. So you're probably thinking, what does he even mean by that? I want you to think back to middle or high school. And I want you to raise your hand if you ever felt uncomfortable, scared, or maybe kind of awful at times. Okay. All right, I'm with you. I see a lot of hands. And actually, sitting up here on the stage right now, I actually feel that way right now. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, when I was in middle school, I would get off the school bus and go straight to the library, not to read, but to hide. You see, I had a stutter, and I was afraid of being bullied. Now, fast forward four decades, and my daughter goes to a public high school just like mine. 2,000 students, 50-minute bell periods, no social and emotional learning. And the other day, I dropped her off at school, and something strange happened. She began to cry. She asked me not to leave her, and she said, Dad, I just can't do it today. And I realized my children, our children, are trying to learn in the same machinery of school that was designed a century ago. School is the same, but the pressures today are far worse, and as we heard from our youth speakers last night, our children are living in the greatest mental health crisis ever recorded. In countries around the world, rates of anxiety and depression, even suicide, are reaching record levels. Teachers are quitting the profession. The United Nations said last month that we need to train 69 million teachers to fill the gap. That is a huge number. School has arrived at a crossroads. We know for many children, school is broken, but we can't see the way forward. But what if I were to tell you there is a way? That I work with schools where children feel not only safe, but excited to learn, where classrooms buzz with wonder and curiosity, where teachers thrive and believe, rightly, that they have the best job in the whole world. My name is Ross Wenner, and I am a teacher and founder of an educational organization that has worked 15 years to help schools bring greater purpose to learning. We believe that school can and should be the ultimate platform for launching children into lives of purpose. Today, I want to introduce you to a few schools doing just that and explain why purpose is the next design principle for school. Now, the schools I'm going to show you, have a, they're different, and they, but they all have a lot in common. And one of these things is that they all ask the same questions. Questions like, what if we design schools specifically to help children thrive? to allow children to embark on what Sir Ken Robinson called the two great human journeys. The journey inside to discover one's gifts and the journey outside to contribute. In other words, what if the purpose of school were purpose? Now, these schools also take recent science around purpose very seriously, as do I. So let's dig into this. Here's a definition widely accepted from Stanford Center on Adolescence. Purpose is a stable intention that is meaningful to self and beneficial to the world. So let's break that down. Purpose is a golden thread that runs through our life. It's stable. It's about meaning and gifts on the inside that connect to a consequential or beneficial action on the outside. Now, what would purpose work look like in schools? The tools I'm going to show you were inspired by experts like Richard Leiter and Simon Sinek. They're commonly used in business leadership development programs, but almost never in school. That is a missed opportunity, and I'm going to show you why. Here's Aditya. He is a junior at the downtown school, an independent school in Seattle, Washington, where I recently ran one of our Youth Purpose Summits, which is a workshop that helps kick off the school's social and emotional learning. So the first thing I always do with students is calling cards. 
This is a great activity for helping students not only see their unique gifts, and every child has them, but also put words to them. Next, students pair up and they share life stories in an activity called Golden Thread. They coach each other to see patterns in the way that they use their gifts to have to take action. And then each student writes a purpose statement, which combines their gifts plus their action, their inside plus their outside. Finally, we make a purpose map. Now, I'm looking out and I see some of you thinking, hmm, <laughs> this seems kind of fuzzy and abstract, right? It is. Purpose is very fuzzy and abstract, but the map helps us boil it down into clear language, goals, and next steps. So here's Aditya's purpose map. His purpose map is to solve problems so others can move forward. Okay, beautiful. It's his why. It goes in the center. The next circle out is his how, all of his strategies for following this path of meaning. He's got a sounding board of advisors, daily practices, next steps, okay? The outer circle is the what, what he spends his time and energy on. So Aditya connects with his sense of purpose by helping his siblings solve problems, by tutoring students after school in physics, and by the Sushi Squad, which is this really cool um, robotics team that mentors children. But what about, what about the parts of his day that deplete him? Well, I challenge students to think about these moments and see if they can either delete them or transform them. Now, this map helps Aditya on a couple of levels. You know, a lot of students believe that they don't have unique gifts or they don't have stories. And that's never true. And this map, when combined with a year-long social and emotional learning program, can help students really see those gifts and bring them to life. It helps children create and see an affirming story about their past. And this story helps them push back in the present against negative self-talk or stereotypes. And in the future, it helps them navigate not only high school, but college and work. So the science behind this is really, really interesting. So check this out. Adults with purpose live on average four years longer. They have fewer heart attacks and strokes. They heal faster, they're happier. Youth with purpose have many of these same benefits, but I want you to focus on the last two. They are deeper learners and better stress managers. Why is this? Here's Stanford's youth purpose study. This is a 45-minute sit-down survey between a researcher and a student. It's been given to tens of thousands of students over the last decade. I'm going to show you what high school looks like today according to this data. So this graph has meaning on the x-axis and action on the y-axis. Okay, so here's Aditya. High action, high meaning. Over here we have the goal-driven students. These students are high action, low meaning. They are working hard to get the grades, to excel at sports, to check all the boxes. Do any of you know a student like this? <laughs> okay, because our schools are really good at producing them, okay? But, you know, if you look carefully, many of these students' goals are me-centered. And when they scratch beneath the surface, they're not sure why they're working so hard. Now, over here we have the dreamers. These dreamers are low, high in meaning, low in action. They have a lot of meaning and, and identity on the inside, but it's not coming alive yet in life, okay? And finally, over here, we have disengaged students. These are students who are low action, low meaning, and these are the students that our system fails all the time. Linda Nathan, who's the founder of the purpose-driven Boston Arts Academy, describes kids with purposes having light behind the eyes. And I love that phrase because it gets at the brightness these students have. Their brains are more likely to fire with positive emotion when they learn, which scientists have proven is the key to deeper learning. Now, these students have their meltdowns like any, like any student would, but stress for them can actually feel invigorating when it connects to something meaningful. And students in the other quadrants experience stress in negative ways. The goal-driven students sometime during high school will ask, why am I working this hard? What is it all about? And the dreamers will ask a different but equally painful question. Why can't 
I find myself in school. Or as one student asked me, why can't I make me happen? And the disengaged students are asking all these questions at the same time. Now, I think this graph helps us understand the mental health crisis that our children are going through. It's a crisis of meaning. And schools play a huge role because they also help shape the social worlds of children. We can do so much better. This reminds me of the words of Bill Damon, who's the director of Stanford Center on Adolescence, who says, the problem today is not stress. The problem is meaninglessness. Purpose-driven schools use tools like the map embedded in a year-long program and this coaching quadrant to see and reach and coach every student towards purpose. They thread purpose through schedule, through curriculum, through advisory, community projects, parent-teacher conferences, right? Which brings me to the final key difference with purpose-driven schools, design. So let's close with that. Let's close with design. There's actually a term, it's really interesting, there's a term for the way that most schools are designed. It's called backwards mapping, and it's been used since the early 1900s to design school. It's very simple. A group of people decide what children should know or do when they graduate, and they build school down from there, grade by grade. Okay, so last century was all about content. This century is all about, so far, 21st century skills or competencies, right? Like creativity, collaboration, communication, and critical thinking. This is how Common Core happened. And this is why schools do the portrait of a graduate exercise. Now, don't get me wrong, competency-based learning is a massive improvement over content memorization, and it produces some vital teaching shifts. But I would argue that it runs on top of the same machinery. Purpose-driven schools take a different approach. They flip this pyramid on, their, on, on its head. Rather than focus on future learning targets, they focus on the inner life of children right now, and they build upwards. They focus on human development. Now, the model that we use to design schools today can make a lot of things feel awkward, like social and emotional learning or diversity and equity work. And that's, that's because this model is designed for what Harvard professor Todd Rose calls the error of standardization, the past. When careers were like linear, success metrics were very clear. And the message we gave students, which actually worked, was you got to just be the same as everyone else, just better. When you flip the pyramid, though, all these things suddenly make sense. And it's because it's designed for our world, which Rose calls the error of personalization. Learning and work is more of a zigzag. There's a lot of iteration. The question being asked children is, who are you and, what's, and, and where do you fit? And so students follow their gut, and when they find the fit, their performance explodes. An example of this human-centered design is Valor Collegiate Academies, a charter network in Nashville, Tennessee. They have two middle schools and one high school that serve 1,200 students. Their mission is to empower our diverse community to live inspired, purposeful lives. They put purpose right at the center. They are a diverse by design school, which means their community includes black, white, Hispanic, Kurdish, North African students. And they base their entire model on this map of human wholeness, where students are challenged every day to balance a sharp mind with a big heart and a noble purpose with aligned actions. Students spend three hours per week working on badges related to these four disciplines, which are broken into eight habits like curiosity, diversity, identity, etc. And they bring these badges every week to Circle, which is a safe meeting space. In Circle, a student can present a badge like My Kindness Master Plan. They can reveal a hidden identity like struggling with ADHD. They can talk about the daily fear of being a person of color in America. And they can apologize to a teacher for disrupting class and receive a hug afterwards. Now, all of these conversations are real, and they can happen because of the tremendous focus and design and training behind this model. 
Valor schools are, are less than six years old. They run out of converted big box stores and they don't have a playing field. Yet every year they rank in the top 1% of all schools in Tennessee for both academic achievement and growth. Valor is building amazing humans and top students. Valor believes that the primary responsibility of school is to develop whole children. And the primary driver for whole children is whole adults. In order to develop whole children and whole adults, we need to create safe, productive, and affirming communities. These are communities where every child feels safe, seen, and heard. Where every child has multiple trusting relationships with adults. And where learning goes way beyond thinking. Learning includes thinking with feeling and doing. We call this purpose learning. And we have very specific tools to design for it. Now, this is not a complete remake of school. But it is a shift in focus because schools like Valor, they do use backwards mapping as a critical tool for designing curriculum, among others. But they focus on human development first. I want to end with the words of a neuroscientist, Mary Helen Imerdino Yang, who says, what we need to focus on in the design of schooling is the development of the people in the system and allow learning to follow that. Right now, we have the cart before the horse. Students like my daughter, like Aditya, and all of the children in this school, they need us to see them as humans first. Because when we do that, amazing things happen. When schools pursue purpose, all these 21st century skills ensue as a byproduct. Because purpose-driven students, they are creative, they are collaborative, they are amazing critical thinkers and communicators. They are all our 21st century needs them to be. It is not an exaggeration to say this is the single most important thing we can do, developing these children for our schools and for humanity. Thank you.